So if you've always wanted to build a guitar pedal but haven't been sure where to start or knew you needed a little bit of help, this video is for you. build this pedal from start to finish which is based on the classic DOD 250 overdrive preamp pedal. So we're going to do the circuit board, populate all the components, do the wiring, drill out the enclosure, assemble the pedal, test it, and by the end of this video we're going to have this finished pedal. So the PCB kit for this pedal is going to be available in the description at fuzzboardeffects.com but really any pedal kit any circuit board, any DIY build you do that is a guitar pedal, this video is going to be helpful for you. I'm really curious to know if you've ever tried to build a guitar pedal before or what got you interested in this in general. Like, how did you get to this video? Uh, while you're here, do me a favor and subscribe to this channel. I'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers and uh, we're almost at 40,000 right now. And I really appreciate each and everybody that has helped uh, the Fuzz Lord Effects channel get here. So I'll talk to you in the comments. Last thing before we get started, a really common question I get asked is like, what kind of different tools I use, soldering iron, what kind of solder I use. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description to uh, Amazon links so you can check out each of my different tools that, these are just things that I bought for myself that uh, I wanted to give away for people to check out some tools that I actually use and think are good. So, of course, I get a small percentage uh, if you click on them, and I really appreciate you checking them out. All right, so the circuit board I'm assembling in this video, you can grab at fuzzlordeffects.com, but really, any circuit board for any kit, this video is gonna be helpful for you. Here's a couple tools that I'm gonna be using in the video, some snippers, wire strippers, needle nose pliers, uh, multimeter. I always recommend that you test each resistor as you put it in. I'll leave a link in the description of this video to uh, some Amazon links where you can grab uh, the same tools that I do. These are just the tools that I use uh, and I get a small commission if you grab one off Amazon. So starting off, you're gonna wanna put all of your resistors into your circuit board to start. And then after you push them through and bend the legs at a right angle like that, just grab the leads on the back side of the circuit board and pinch them together a little bit so that they hold themselves in the circuit board. On this kit, all of the part values are labeled on the PCB. So just make sure that you're grabbing the right resistor and testing it with your multimeter as you're putting it in so you don't make any mistakes. After you get all the resistors installed, go ahead and solder the back side of all the resistors. I've got my iron set to about 800 degrees Fahrenheit because I'm using lead-free solder. It uh, needs to be quite a bit hotter to flow correctly. If you're using leaded solder, uh, about 625 degrees Fahrenheit is plenty. So after you get your soldering done, go through and use your part snippers to cut off all the leads. Then if you need to touch up any uh, solder joints that need it, make sure everything's real clean looks like this and then move on to the next parts. So next let's install the diodes. Diodes are a polarized component meaning they need to go in one direction. There's a little black band on the diodes that you need to line up with the white stripe on the PCB. So after you get the diodes installed, same thing, uh, bend the leads a little bit on the back so they don't fall out, flip the board over, solder all of the leads, and then trim them. You'll notice on this PCB, there's three clipping diodes on the right-hand side instead of two. This was a prototype PCB, and I decided to go with two hard clipping diodes, just like the original DoD 250. Next up is the op amp.
another component that it does matter the way that you install it. There's going to be a dot or a marker on the top side of the op amp that you need to point up. I'd really recommend using a socket for your op amp so you can swap out different ones and see what they sound like. Next up is going to be all of the box capacitors and ceramic caps. So just same thing, push them through, bend the leads on the back, solder them, and then clip the leads. This is what the board's going to look like after you get all the caps put in. All of those box caps are non-polarized, so it does not matter which way you install them. But these electrolytic capacitors that have a plus mark on the PCB do have to be installed in a certain direction. So the long lead is the positive lead. The short lead is the negative lead. Be sure that you line up the positive side, the long lead, with the positive uh, plus mark on the electrolytic cap, uh, silk screen marks on the PCB. All right, that's all of the components installed on the board. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to take some wires that are about two inches long, strip the tips of them. In this video, I'm using pre-stripped wire. Insert the wires through the back side of the board, solder them on the front. It just makes the install easier. So go through, add the wires for the input and the outputs, as well as the nine volt and the ground. Once you get your wires stripped, bend the stripped parts over like a J. Push them through the component and then use your fingers or some needle nose pliers to bend it around the lead and solder it. Be sure you pay attention to which one, which lead on the jacks is the ground and the signal. The ring is the ground, the tip is the signal. On the DC jack, similar thing, the ground is the one on the bottom that I just showed and the nine volt is the top on a boss style uh, negative center DC jack, just like that. Install the pots. I like to use PCB mounted pots for this build. Uh, it makes it so that the board just installs really securely into the enclosure. All right, the second circuit board that comes with this kit is a circuit board that works with the stomp jack that just takes care of all the input, output, and uh, LED wiring for you, as well as this ribbon cable. So pull the ends off, insert it through the board, and solder it. I put it through on the top, and then solder it on the bottom side. You can bend over just a little bit the two outside wires so it holds itself in place. It doesn't take much solder, uh, and I'll leave a link in the description to some good solder also. Using the right size solder, like a really thin, about one millimeter thick solder really makes things easy. So when you attach the ribbon cable to the secondary PCB, make sure the print of the secondary PCB is facing up just like the components are, just like that. So now you just need to install the switch. You can skip the LED for right now 
And if you wanted to, you could go ahead and plug this in, test it, and make sure everything's working correctly, that your uh, input and your output jacks are wired correctly, and that you're getting power. So I set this build up for a 125B box. Uh, on the website, you can download the drill layout. I have it over next to me on the bench. You can either use a ruler. Uh, I like using a digital caliper. I'll leave a link to one of those too. Uh, it's just really easy. You can like set the measurement, then lock it at the market with your pencil. So take some masking tape mask off your box and then you're going to want to measure out uh, a center line going in the horizontal and vertical direction make some lines and then we're going to do all the measurements that are available uh, on the website we're going to mark those out everything's measured from the center of the box so the center of the top face and the center of the uh, the other top face where the jacks go so here I'm just measuring out from the center for all the pots, the LED, as well as the stomp switch. Uh, and then you're going to use an awl. Uh, I believe that's the right word. A punch. <laughs> anyway, go through and use a punch to mark all of the places you're going to drill. This is just going to make it so your drill bit doesn't slip when you're drilling out the enclosure. So get everything marked out, and then we can switch over to the drill press. I like to start off using a very fine bit uh, and drilling out the pilot holes first for everything and then switching over uh, and doing the same to the top before I use a step bit. Like this to make everything the proper size. So just have your components ready, your pots, your foot switch, your LED, bezel, and the jacks and everything uh, to make sure that you're drilling the correct size hole in the right spots and that everything fits. Right here I used a different bit for the LED bezel. Wear safety glasses, don't wear rings, um, don't wear long sleeves, and I believe a lot of people tell you not to wear gloves when you're using a rotary tool like this. So it looks like all finished up before we take the masking tape off. So now we're going to get everything installed in the enclosure starting with the LED. It has a long leg and a short leg also. The long leg's the positive, the short one's the negative. So the negative, the short side, is going to face towards the bottom of the enclosure towards like the foot switch and away from the input and output jacks. So push them in the bezel and then you can insert them into the enclosure. Short leg pointing down. It's a pressure fit if you drill the hole the right size. Uh, if you make it a little too big just use a drop of Elmer's glue. So just take the jacks, the wires for the jacks, fold them up a little bit, insert the PCB and the stomp switch into the enclosure. The trick with the stomp switch PCB is you have to put it through the enclosure and then thread the two leads of the LED through the stomp switch circuit board. It's just like threading a needle. Uh, be patient. You'll get it.
So you can see there the leads are sticking up. But then you just got to push the LED leads through that circuit board and then push the uh, stomp switch through, get it bolted down as well as the pots and then the jacks. All right, same with the pots, put the washers and the nuts on, tighten them up. Hold on to the PCB from the back with your other hand. Put the power jack through the enclosure first. It'll make it easier to tighten everything up and then install the input output jacks. Tighten them up. And that's what it's going to look like when it's all finished up. So the ribbon cable connects the two circuit boards and makes all the input and output wiring really easy. Uh, once everything's all done, you just have to solder and trim those two leads for the LED. And uh, yeah, be sure that you're connecting the input and the output wires correctly. The tip of the jack is going to be the signal wire, the ring, the part that connects to the center is going to be the ground. Pay attention to the DC jack also. The one with the little L bracket is the ground, and then the opposite one is going to be the 9 volt. Pay attention which way the diodes are installed, those electrolytic caps, and your op amp facing upwards. watching this video hopefully this gives you more insight into how guitar pedals are built and hopefully you just finished up your first guitar pedal so drop a comment below let me know how it went please subscribe to the channel share this video with a friend that you think would be into it I want to give a big thank you to everybody on the patreon page that helps support what I do here on the YouTube channel uh, we do some behind the scenes stuff some Q&A it's all the folks whose names I'm running on the screen so while we're doing that, let's go over some basic troubleshooting for this build or basically any guitar pedal. If you build your pedal and you're not getting any signal, as in any clean signal or any dirty signal at the guitar effect, you probably have uh, one of your jacks wired backwards, which is grounding the clean signal. So it's just not gonna work. So if you get nothing at first, check your wiring on the jacks. If you turn on your pedal and you're getting the clean signal but when you turn the pedal on to engage the effect and you're not getting any LED or any sound, check your wiring on the DC jack. You probably got that backwards and the circuit is just not being powered correctly and not turning on. If you fire up the pedal and the clean signal works, then when you turn the effect on the LED comes on but we're not getting any sound out of the circuit board, uh, you test with a multimeter and see that you got a proper 9 volts on the circuit board. Check your op amp orientation. Uh, if you put it in backwards, the circuit's not going to work. So that's some basic troubleshooting. It really just comes down to sometimes we accidentally take two wires and wire them backwards to either the DC jack, uh, the input and output jacks. We install an LED backwards, something like that, or the op amp. So just be very mindful of that. I'll talk to you in the comments. I'm Jason from Fuzzlord. Please subscribe to the channel, and I'll talk to you in the next video.